Okay, we've got the logistic equation. Okay? And what this is, is just exponential growth. Okay? But if Y gets too close to L, the growth rate decreases. Okay? Things change more and more slowly as Y gets close to L, and this term takes over from this one, because this approaches zero. Okay? And what this gives you is a growth that when you get close to y equals l, levels off because the rate of change, which is the dy dx or dy dt, approaches zero. Okay? That gives you the sigmoid. And you probably saw this in your calculus course, sigmoid function. Not a whole lot, but I think we did. Yeah, I, I would expect that you did. And it's easy to solve, so if you don't remember it, you know, it it's something that hopefully uh, rings a bell, but even if it doesn't, it's not that difficult to understand. And of course, if Y approaches from higher, you know, if it, Y is getting lower and approaching L, then you have, you'd have to have an exponential decrease toward the thing, okay? Um, and we'll see how that works out of the solutions, very simple. Okay, so it's separable, and you saw that eventually. Because, you know, as we saw in looking at this, well, it's not linear because you're going to have a y squared here, right? If it's not linear, you better hope it's separable because you don't really have a whole lot of other options unless it happens to be Bernoulli or something. Is it a Bernoulli? No. Why not? I don't know, I don't know maybe it is. Let's see. Because yeah, you're going to have a y squared over here because you don't have a y. Yeah, here you do. You have an ly. So maybe, it, yeah, actually, I never really thought about it, but you have, okay, so that could be y prime uh, minus k l y equals negative y squared. Right? K and that is Bernoulli. It's k y squared. Yeah, okay, k y squared. That, that, that negative sign really was a negative with a k. I just didn't write it as explicitly as you might. Okay. Right? Well, that's the form. Okay. Uh, so, you know, you're going to let V equal Y to the negative 1. So, and since we just did Bernoulli, that's we're seeing. Uh, so when I said, no, it isn't, I started looking at it and said, wait a minute. And then you said, yeah, why not? And I said, mm -hmm. Yeah, there it is. Okay? This is easier. So, it would be K D T, right? Huh? Yeah, DT. I was going to get to that. Okay. Right? And I didn't really have to write two dy's here. What's A over Y plus B over L minus Y going to have to equal? That's what it, that's one thing it equals, okay? So that was good. And you did that in your head, which is really good, okay? And I think what I heard was right. Um, but just from here and here, this has to equal 1 over y times l minus y, right? Yeah. Okay? Because the only difference between this and this is that I've replaced the reciprocal y times l minus y with the a over y plus b over l minus y, and you've done enough partial fractions that you know exactly what I'm doing. 
So I think what Alexander just said, I won't even make you do it since he apparently said it either right or very nearly right. Okay, you get A times L minus Y plus BY over Y times L minus Y equals 1 over Y times L minus Y. Now I'm not sure you had the numerator right, I didn't hear it all, but I think you had the denominator right which is still very good, even if you didn't have the numerator right. And I'm just going to assume you had it right, so you have all the glory. Okay. So what's this mean? It means that uh, A times L plus B minus A, Y has to identically equal 1. That means equal 1 for all possible values of Y. Okay? Well, that means that uh, A L equals 1 and if B minus A times Y is going to give you something that isn't a multiple of Y for all values of Y then B minus A has to be 0. Right? We know this has to be zero because there's no y over here. So if it's anything but zero, changing y would change what we have. Okay? This being constant then has to be equal to this, and this has to be zero. Okay? So, well, a is 1 over l, right? So A is 1 over L and B is 1 over L. You don't even have to get all that formal with solving it. Okay? Got it? Okay, so if I haven't made a stupid algebra error, we see that now. So uh, this equation with that information becomes 1 over LY plus 1 over L times L minus Y dy equals KDT. Okay? Or just take the 1 over L out. We don't have to worry about that denominator to get a little more complicated. Okay? Now we're going to multiply both sides by L just to get that out of our way because it's real easy to put that over here when we integrate. Then we get L K plus the constant. And we integrate K dt after multiplying through by L, right? And a T. Huh? Okay, T. Getting really careless. Okay. And, you know, we'd have discovered that shortly when there's no T dependence. Okay, very good. Over here. What's the derivative of the natural log of L minus Y? Yeah. Negative Y from the chain rule over L minus Y. With that negative, it becomes 1 over L minus Y. And, you know, I thought we had lost a constant somewhere. But, huh? I thought we lost a constant somewhere. Well, your constant's negative 1 because of the chain rule. And you know that. Okay. Well, this is natural log of Y over L minus Y. Right? Which means that y over L minus y, absolute value thereof, um, is 
equals e to the c e to the l k t. Okay. So that the absolute value of y over l minus y equals a e to the l k t. I've done this before, and this is the last time I'm going to go through the detail, but you have to know it. And I'm just going to state it this time. So we have this. If the absolute value is AE to the LKT, where A has to be greater than zero, then this quantity is either plus or minus that, which still excludes A equals zero. Okay. Make sense? So we still have to solve for Y. Okay, so I'm going to let you solve that for y. That's the central step, and you've got to kind of get used to it. It feels a lot like what you do when you use an integrating factor on a first order homogeneous, not homogeneous equation. Algebra is very similar in a lot of ways. So go ahead and solve that for y, and then we'll see how that might be interpreted in a couple of situations.